All right. Well, welcome everybody to the second Division G webinar. This week it's going to be, we'll be talking about judging because we have a couple of, we have some speech contests coming up and we need some qualified judges. This is, let's see, today is September 15th. And our speaker today is from TLC Toastmasters. Please help me welcome Sarah Tolmakoff and she will be talking about judging. Go ahead, Sarah. Thank you, Dennis. Hi, my name is Sarah and I am talking about judging. I have been at TLC Toastmasters for seven years and I've been through quite a few contests. I've competed and I've judged, so I kind of know both sides. Today, I'm not gonna follow a PowerPoint. I'm gonna kind of go in and out of PowerPoint because I think PowerPoints are boring and it's much fun, better. <laughs> That's not correct hour. It's more fun to listen to someone talk. And I want this to be interactive. So if you guys have questions, kind of raise your hand or just let me know and we will talk it through. And I'm gonna rewarn, kind of pre-warn, I'm not gonna do the Zach training that TI probably would want me to in how I judge, where we give you some tips, which is was really helpful for me. I got them from someone else and I'm sharing them on because it's helped me. So the number one thing to remember, everyone, you would before you judge, you're gonna assume it's like an evaluation. And it's not, we are not, it is not like an evaluation. We have to treat it different. Evaluation is an appraisal and advice of someone's speech. And judging is selecting a winner. So when you're judging, you wanna select the winner. You are basing it off of different criteria than the evaluation. So when you are a judge, you're gonna get three pieces of paper. And the first one is the judge's certificate of eligibility. And I'll go ahead and pop this up on the slide so you can read it with me. It's going, I was thinking about it. There you go. All right, so I'm gonna go to here, to the judging criteria, which is a little blurry, blurry. So actually, what's the one I want? You know what, I might have forgot to include this one. I'll leave this one up because it's really quite the same. So on the certificate, it says eligibility, let me go back to it. To be a chief judge, voting judge, or tie-breaking judge at a speech contest, you must meet all requirements below. Be a club contest, at a club contest, be a pay member, so you have to be paying, at an area division di district contest, which you have different levels of contests. You have a club, you have an area, division, and district. So you have to be a paying member at the club, and you have to have been a member for six months. You also have had to complete a minimum of six speech projects in the competent communication manual or in certifications of completions of level one and level two of any path in the pathways. At the international speech test, which I'm not gonna talk about right now because so we're not doing that, there's even more criteria. You have to have a lot more experience and you can't just be judging on with no experience. And then judges for contests beyond the club level are not eligible to complete in the same contest type during the same contest cycle. So those are some rules we have, and that's to protect so we don't have new members judging, because like I said, judging is so different than evaluation. Now, at the club level, it is good for you to practice. This is where you don't need any requirements. You're gonna practice, and it's a perfect place. So you can move on and be a judge at the area and hire. Each judge has a code of ethics to follow. And it says, I will demonstrate the uttermost objectivity. I will consciously avoid bias of any kind in selecting first, second, and third place contestants. I will not consider any contestants club area, division, or district, or, or affiliation, nor will I consider any contestants age, sex, race, creed, nationality, disability, profession, or political beliefs. Number two, I will not time the speeches and will not consider the possibility of undertime or overtime when judging a contestant's speech. 
Three, I will support by word and deed in the contested rules and judging standards, remain from public criticism of the contest and any revival and only reveal my participation as a judge scores and ranking in accordance with speech contest rules. Four, I am not a member of the same club as any contestant when judging at the division, district, semifinals, and international levels. Five, I have no conflict of interest with any of the contents that would cause me to be biased. I certify that I'm eligible to serve as a judge under the current speech contest rules and uphold the judge's code of ethics. So when you first sit down, you're gonna fill out this form. You're gonna say what contest it is and where um, contest level is it a club, area, division, district, and the date. I'm going to read through this and then you're going to sign in date. And then the chief judge is going to come around and hand this in. So, this is very important. So, the chief judge keeps this on file that you're upholding your ethics. And then so that's the first page, and then you get two other pages. You will have a ballot, and then you have the second page of that, which would be the total of per page, is the judging criteria and judge's code of ethics. So it reminds you of your code of ethics that you need to follow. That's so very important. All right, so now I wanna go into what you do once you get the actual ballot, and I'll share my screen. All right, so as you see on your screen, here's the evaluation contest judges grade and ballot. You see that there are two portions. There's a top portion and it has the judging items and that's where you're gonna be putting on your marks and your numbers to score. And at the very bottom, you're going to see the judge's official ballot. And it has first place, second place, third place. Now, for each contest, we have evaluation, table topics, tall tales, international. Each form looks different. So anytime you are judging, you need to make sure you're familiar with the form because each one is different. And you can see in the table topics that this one has more categories and more things to judge on. You have Let's see, one, two, three, six, and this one only had four for the evaluation. And when you see the international one, it has many, many more. But they all have the same basic portion is you have the judging items and the judge's official ballot. Um, that is the second page. So I wanted to talk first thing is about the judge's official ballot. The very first thing that you want to do when you get your ballot. We're going to practice here. I'm going to show you. The very first thing you do, you get this, and the very bottom it says sign your signature. You're going to take your pen and you're going to sign it because guess what? When you are done with the contest and judging everyone, you forget to sign it. And if it's not signed, they cannot count as a ballot. So then you've done all that work and you're just servicing all your time and plus the contestant's time that they do the contest. Okay, so number one rule, like always, 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 always sign. And then to make this even easier is at this point, contest hasn't even started yet. We are folding this. You're doing it like that and you're tearing it. It's torn, it's signed, and I'm putting it to the side. Because guess what? I don't need this for quite a while. And so it's done. And that way you don't have to worry about it at the end. And then give a much smaller form to work with, which I also like. So that way it's easier to handle. Um, does anyone want to see that form again, the judge's official ballot? I'll pull it up again. There you go. So you see on the bottom, signature of the judge. You have the contestant, first place, second place, third place. And oh, you also have your name to please, please print. So definitely make sure. Okay. 
What did I do with? Ah. Okay. So number one thing, well, not number one thing, because I say there's a lot of number one things, but when it actually comes down to the judging, the contestant is going up there and it's really, really important, as they said in the judging's criteria, is not to see anything but a speaker. You're not seeing if it's a man, a woman, age, anything, right? You want, if outside the club level, you want to not judge on, um, well, even the club level. You don't want to judge if you like that person or not like that person. Um, you want to be careful on that, especially if you go into district and division and higher. You know, maybe they're not part of your club, but maybe they're an ex-boyfriend or girlfriend that you hate. You want to see that they lose. You cannot do that as a judge. You have to be so careful. You do not want to have your biased opinion of anybody um, to be up there. And trust me, I'm speaking from experience. I've gone up there and I've kind of like, like that person's a contestant. But you have to really put that all aside. You cannot let that be. It is on their performance and the criteria that they're giving um, that is on the form, all these judging items. That is all that you're judging on. Let's see. So you'll see on here on the judging items, and I'm going to go ahead and pull this up again. Okay, so we have the table talk topics contest. Now I'm filming that so hopefully you guys can see on your screen. They have the judging items as speech development, you know, the, which is the opening body close organization smoothest. This is what we teach in the first couple of speech, speeches and uh, Toastmasters is, you know, do you have a beginning? Did you open with a good structure? Do you have a middle? Do you have an end? And does it flow? Effect, the next one is effectiveness and it's logic directness, enthusiasm, achievement of purpose, audience, response. Next is physical appearance, body language, and speaking area. I do want to make a note on appearance because I've heard this quite a few times from other people, is that especially outside of club, once you get higher into the area and district, is that people will say, oh, he wasn't dressed up or enough, or she wasn't dressed up enough. And I want to caution that you don't let that control your judging because you don't know someone's circumstance. You don't know if they have lots of money, if they don't, maybe they had problems with the babysitter before they got there. Um, and they didn't have time to pick up their, their clothes and dry cleaning. You don't know. But what I do like to look, look for on the parents is, is did they try? Is their hair kept? Is, are their nails clean? Or, you know, one person um, had lots of, had dirty hands, you know, that's something that could, okay, they need to wash your hands. That's something that anyone could do, no matter what our status. So you can't judge someone of, um, you know, they didn't wear a suit when you thought they were, should have worn a suit. Um, they had jeans on when they should have had a dress or slacks on. You don't want to do that. But on the appearance, did they present themselves? Did they take that extra step and look like they went up, they're up there for a contest, that they're putting their best foot forward? Next category is voice, the flexibility, volume. We all understand that. Do they speak loud enough? Do they have tone? Do they show emotion? Do they, you know, all of that. That all goes into that one. Appropriateness to speech purpose and audience. As, you know, for evaluation, we're doing evaluation this time. You know, did they evaluate? Did they not? Uh, for table topics, or sorry, tall table or international, there's definitely appropriateness there. Was that in the category? And that comes down to it. Did they talk about stuff that they shouldn't in a way that they shouldn't? Did they use F-bombs and all of that? That all goes into the appropriateness of that. Um, correctness, grammar, punctuation, word selection is the next one. So you'll see after all the judging items that they have suggested point values and they have different uh, subcategories. So like the content, they say 55%, the developably 30%, language 15%, and then they give you the score, um, suggested point values. 
And this is where I got caught up in my first time I judge and I was glad I got some training afterwards. And so this is where I'm really gonna train you how I got trained. That to me is very confusing. And all those numbers could be mumble jumbo and I'm not good at math and I can't count that high unless I have a calculator. So it's really confusing. So I'm gonna share my way, but this is me encouraging you to find your way. If those numbers make sense to you and it works, do that. But just in case it doesn't, I'm gonna show you what I do. So we're gonna go back to the very beginning of the contest. They have now, we've signed our forms, all the contestants have been briefed, you're sitting there and you're waiting, and they have now drawn the order of the contestants. They're gonna tell you from one, two, three, four, five, what the contestants order is. At that time, and I use my ballot a little bit backwards. So a lot of people start and put name number one here, two, three, four, and in fact, that's how the numbers go. I use it different and I'll show you why now. I'll put name one right here, name two here, and name three here course closer together if there's more contestants. And this is also why it helps with tearing this off at the bottom. So what I do when I'm judging is I fold it. We'll see. This is how I judge. I have a name one next to my criteria that I'm looking for. You see that? So all I did was take this picture, this piece of paper, and then I folded it like this. And this is also another trick that comes in handy later too. So there's lots of reasons to why I do this and how I was taught, why I was taught to do it this way too. Now, like I said, all these numbers to me are super confusing and you have to be focusing on the speech. When you're on the speech, I'm focused on the speaker. I have my notes, I have my pen right here. And this is all I do. Speech development, oh, that was a great opening. They did their speech trial, they addressed the Toastmasters. That's a plus. And so I add a little plus mark. I have, oh, you know what, they're really quiet. So I'll do a minus mark, you can see that. And that's what I'll go through. And then if like if their voice gets better and they did really good, well then I might add another plus. Oh, you know what, they did even better, I add another plus. So I'll go through each box and all I'm doing during the, the speech is doing pluses and minuses for me to remember what was good, what was bad. And that is also why you really wanna study this forum beforehand of any speech contest, because when you're, the speaker is speaking and you have these different categories, you need to know which one's which. So you need to really remember which one is which so you're marking right. There's a lot going on. This isn't your typical evaluation where you can just kind of make your notes and scribble and you know, blank piece of paper or, um, you really need to know. So at the end of the con, the, when the contestant's done, you have one minute to tally all this up. Just one minute, it's pretty quick. So as soon as the contestant's done, I go back through and I go and I use, so instead of using these numbers, I use one through five. I just use a system of one through five. And I've been through a lot of training and I've used different points. I've tried this system. I've tried one through 10, I've tried like one through 50 and one through five works for me. So I want to, you need to practice. Practice at a normal meeting, not at a contest. And when everyone, your different speakers, use this form and get a fill. Once you memorize the different categories, Two, you get your own personal style of judging there, and that way it's fair. So once during that minute, once the contestant's done, I then go through my numbers. Again, I'm just using one through five. So okay, I'll do speech development. You know what, I think they did a four. Effectiveness, you know, a five. Physical, I have a four. Voice, I think they did a three. 
appropriateness, a five, correctness, I think they did a four. So then my sheet's gonna look like this with all the numbers. Now, I do not, do not, do not, do not add up the numbers right then and there. Once you figure out all of this, and I do, I take pretty much the whole minute to make sure with my pluses and minuses that, and I'm recalling their speech, that these are appropriate numbers for their speech alone. And I do not add it up because I may remember a number or two here for their contestants, but I don't have a whole number. So I really don't know what I'm judging them on yet. So that way it's easier for me to judge the other contestants. I don't have a number in my head for the next contestant. I don't know, I just, I have individual numbers. And this is where the folding also comes in hand. So once I've done, I know the next speaker's coming up. I take it. Let's see. And now I have name number two. The criteria is right there. This is my this is my box I'm working in. It's right there. And that way, again, that first speaker is gone. I don't know what they did. I don't care at this point because my sole focus on this next speaker and their performance. And so again, I do the same thing. I do the pluses and the minuses, and I come up with the numbers from one to five. And again, I don't add, and I repeat this for the third person. So then I work my way all the way down towards the end. And again, everything's folded, so I'm not looking at the previous contestants. Now here comes the part at the end. All the contestants have completed, they are done. And now you have to go through and give a whole thing, a whole number. This is the good part is that you have as much time as you need for this. You don't have to just have a minute. If you need five minutes to do this, you have that time. So now I unfold and I go back and I add. Yeah. And you, know, you can use a calculator if you need to add. You can, my one through five, I can count it pretty easy. And I go through and I put my whole numbers at the bottom. And then this, is where we do, whoops. All right, I hit a button, I don't know where I'm at. There I am, okay. The, and then this is where you take your judge's ballot and you look at your numbers and highest ranking is first and then second place and third place. Very important, you cannot have a tie on your piece of paper. You have to have a first place, you have to have a second place, you have to have a third, third place. If you do have a tie, that's also where the pluses and minuses go back. And I reevaluate and see who had more pluses or who had more minuses in the category. And I may have to adjust their numbers a little bit because um, you cannot turn into a tie. Your whole ballot is gone at that point if you put a tie that you have a tie for first place because really you did not do your job. No matter how small it may be, someone did just a tad better. There's one speaker that deserves to be the first place and the second and the third. So really, that's why you have all this time that you need and don't let them rush you. If you need that time to figure it out, take it. And again, you're making sure it's signed and printed. You guys have any questions so far? Uh, Sarah? Yeah. Want to make a comment about tie-breaking judges? Yes, I was. So once all this is done, you're folding it up and you hold, normally you hold it up in the air and you say, hey, I'm ready. And the, the chief judge will have someone coming and pick, picking up all the ballots and then they go out and they go out of the room and the chief judge is calculating all the ballots you know they have the points first place is three second is two first um, third place is one point now there is a secret judge in the audience you don't know who it is 
and they have a tiebreakers ballot. So they've been judging, and that ballot is only news if there is a tie. So after all these are collected and they're all tally, sometimes you have the same, um, the winners in the same place. And so the judge's tie is news that to break it. So by one point, it could break or make someone. I wanna go back and say, we're not supposed to know you're judging. Of course, at a club, that is super hard. If everyone knows everyone, it's a small space. So when you are judging, make sure that everything is, you're protecting your thing. I don't want to be like, you know, like grade school, like you're like this, like doing your test answers. You don't have to go to the extreme, but at the same time, you kind of want to be that. You don't want the next judge overlooking or a contestant maybe sitting down next to you and overlooking and seeing how you're judging. It is just for your eyes only. Um, I wanted to go back and share because I talked about the table topics, different categories. I wanted to go back and share the evaluation. So this is the evaluation. Um, you know, as you saw on the table topics, there's all those judging items. And on the evaluation, you have much less. You have analytical, you have recommendations, um, you know, were they positive, specific, helpful technique? You know, a lot of people do the sandwich method. There's different techniques you could do. Um, how do they summarize the evaluation? We can see why you need to know the different forms because they are not at all the same. And they have different points for different things. Okay, let me make sure. So I mentioned that, actually, let me go back to this. So you have this paper, you have this paper of all these notes. And this is super important to note. You wanna take this paper once you're done with all your numbers, all your judging, and I want you to fold it, crumble it, whatever you wanna do. Best thing to do with this, because you don't want anyone, you don't want anyone to see this. Oh, is yeah. To, um, is to eat it. It's my suggestion just to eat the paper. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. But I'm not kidding that no one should see this. In fact, what I normally do is I put it in my purse, I put it in my pocket, and I take this home with me. Because no one needs to know what you've judged. A contestant may see this and share with someone else. You don't, you don't want that. That is just bad news. It could hurt a contestant by knowing they lost by one point you judged them on and they got second or third place versus the first or second place. And so that doesn't, have, it doesn't help anyone. So take this home. If you don't eat this and swallow it, take this home. Um, and don't discuss. Never, just do not discuss anything. One time in our club, this, so this is real stories, when the winners came down and i had been judging for a while we had a lot of new members at the club at that time and the person who won first place probably shouldn't and i'm not just saying that i'm saying that based on the performance based on who i did talk to judging and it was just really weird and then we found out that it was by only one point which really kind of sucks to that second first place person because they really should have gone on the first and you know what that was bad on us that we talked about that i shouldn't be judging asking other judges what they judge, it doesn't matter. All that matters is myself. And I don't need even talking to the chief judge afterward. The chief judge didn't say, need to say anything. Like it just needs to be said. They said, and those papers go home, that they don't go with you, that they don't get out of the side of anyone but you. Sarah, do you see the comment from Caroline? I do, I said that. So Caroline has the, uh the comment of so with your five point system how does this compare if the cat categories have different point values with yes so as you can see i just come from my finger but let me pull it up i don't know why it keeps going from that started so she's saying that let's go to here the table topics. So they're saying the content has a 55% um, 
And then it has the two categories in the content, the speech development and effectiveness. And then the delivery is in the physical and voice, and that's 30%. Appropriateness and correction is in language, and that's 15%. So she's saying that more categories, um, that the categories on top have more percentage power, right? It, it's, has more power on the speech development and the effectiveness versus your correctness. If you misspeak a word or two, that shouldn't have the same weight as the speech, the actual speech, beginning, end, and beginning, middle, and end, right? That just makes sense. Um, the appropriateness, again, that could be your personal style. So again, it shouldn't have as much weight. So if, and it goes into that on, I think I have it on here. No, I don't. No, I meant to. Um, it goes, so there is a form that one of the forms you get, and it goes into that 55%, 30%, 15%. I cannot do this, and I don't do this. So with the five point system, I don't give it more value than not. And I've been using this for seven years, and it still works. My system of five, one through five works, 10 through one works, because at the very end, I have, I'll pump on my paper. I have, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to sit here and count. At the very end, I have three different scores. One's higher and one's less. I've never had it fail me. Where um, where I've had it, like these numbers don't match of who should get first, second, and third. I've always had them mess, mess up, uh, match up. I do, but being with that said, I do spend more time giving pluses and minuses here. This, I only give pluses and minuses like if I need to, because I'm spending more time here of remembering what they did good and what they needed to fix. Does that help answer, Caroline? And I like Dale's comment, no problem, he needs more fiber for the paper. That's hilarious. <laughs> I don't know, Dennis, what do you think? Does that, do you wanna chime in on anything on do you news the whole system with the giving more value to different things? Yeah, I do it differently. Do you wanna share I, that? Yeah, I take the second column and there's a range of numbers in there and I pre-mark my form and pick a number that's in the middle in that second column, and that's my standard. And then I go plus and minus from that. So that, it's kind of like what you do, but I do try to stick with the form a little bit by using the similar values for that category. But it's similar to what you do. Great, I'm glad you shared, thank you. That's one thing I think judging is super personal, and that's why you should get into judging practicing. There was one time I did practice at the club because I wanted to get ready for the contest. And I sat there and I judged and I was like, oh man, I am so glad this is not a real contest because I had the same scores and I didn't have my system down yet. And I was like, there's no way I could turn in my judging ballot and know that that was fair. I know I didn't do a fair job. So I'm like, I'm glad this was practice. But that really did happen at a contest. That I'm like, I, I can't judge. I'm just too... I'm not being unbiased. I have biased opinions. I have, I'm, maybe I wasn't paying attention enough or something. I would not turn in that judge's ballot. They don't need it. They, I would just say, you know what? It's not gonna help anyone by not turning it in because I, I was not fair. So don't be astray, um, afraid to do that if that does come. And then for the system from one to five, three is my middle number. So if I think they were average, that three, I give them a three. And then I use my pluses and minuses from there. So I'm kind of using what Dennis says. I use the average of a three, and then, okay, they did pluses, they did some minuses, and then I go from there. Um, and that's why I also do the pluses and minuses, because I go back to that speech development and the effectiveness, the higher categories, and I kind of adjust during that. You know, the value I gave for the physical is, it, it didn't change, that didn't change. Well, I can go back and, kind of say, you know what, they did really, really good. 
with the opening of the speech and the conclusion um, versus this other person who maybe was just, just a tad less. And I think that's about it. Uh, I'm gonna give a kind of a summary. Um, the summary is when you get your form, to always, always tear off the bottom piece. And there I did something with it. So well, the first thing you wanna do, quick summary. You wanna sign and print your name. Tear off the bottom piece and put it to the side because you don't need it right now and it, you just don't need it. You wanna be fair, you wanna do a good job, you wanna forget everything else. One thing I didn't talk about is the time. It does not matter the timer to you. If they went over or under, you don't wanna care. In fact, do not it where you can see that timer's light because it will throw you off. But no matter what, your eyes are going to go to it. Oh, are they close to time? What do they do? It does not matter. You're doing the performance. All the other criteria is up to it's everything with the chief judge, the timer, and all of that. It has nothing to do with you. You're judging that performance. Judging is selecting a winner. Evaluation is appraisal and advice. So judging, you are selecting a winner. It's kind of cool, it's exciting. They get to go to the next step or they get to win a trophy. It's pretty cool. Okay, so we're saying, we're taking this off. You're gonna put their names in order and you're gonna come with a system for you. If this system works with all these numbers, the system from one to five, one to 10, whatever works, it is up to you. And then you have, and I do, backwards. I put my first name here, second name here, third name, and so on, so on, so on. So I could fold it, and I'm only looking at that person and this criteria. Know the criteria you're judging on. Make sure you're familiar with it. I use pluses and minuses as the speech is going. Once the speech is done, I use that minute to give my numbers. Whatever system I'm using, I give the numbers, and I fold it over, and that contestant never happened. Now I'm just focus on that second contestant. I'm gonna do that same thing. I'm gonna fold it over. That contestant never happened. I'm judging solely on that contestant at that moment. At the very end, I have all of my numbers. Again, whatever system you're using, you're now adding up your numbers. You have full numbers here. You wanna make sure you put a first, second, or third. There could never be a tie. So if you have a tie, we'll be a tie with and figure it out and put the first, second, and third. This goes into the chief judge. The chief judge does all of them. And then at that point, if there is needs a tiebreaker, there is a tiebreaker form that the chief, the judge had picked. And I saw Dale had a question. Is there by chance an example speech and judging form for it? Not quite sure I understand what you're asking, Dale. Oh, you mean like online, if someone gave a speech and then there is actually like someone show their judge's form? Is that what you mean? Right. Right. I don't know if there's anything. We can look and see if there is. Dennis, do you know of anything? I don't recall ever seeing anything like that, but that doesn't mean there isn't. I can Google it, Google around for it. Yeah. If we were to do this, Dale, because we were part of my club, if we were to do this, like, practice at a normal everyday meeting, we could do this, and I'd be happy to show you what mine looks like at the end of the speeches, and so that way you could compare and see my notes. And it doesn't matter because it's not a contest, and it's just kind of, you know, a different form of evaluation kind of at that point. Sounds good. Thanks. Hi, Thanks. Carolyn. Google it. GTS. Google that. Such <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? Did that help answer everyone? Dale, I know it's your first time, or maybe second contest, first second contest? Yeah, first, first one. Yeah. First one. Does that kind of give you an idea of what to expect and what to do? It is, yeah. It's, it's good. I can sort of like look around and make sure I got you know, the right, the right things to look for. Yes, yes. So definitely look at the forms beforehand before a contest. Um, that's also why it's good that we're starting at the club level because kind of like a practice um, for the contestants, for the judging. And that way, you're for, once you're comfortable, then you can move up to the area division and, 
and judge there or participate there. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. And hi, Megan. I saw you join a few minutes ago. That's it. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> oh, let me add one more, a couple more things. Yeah, to please do. I'd like to stand a little bit more on the tie-breaking judge. That tie-breaking judge does also have a slightly different form. The upper part is exactly the same. However, the bottom part of it has room for all of the speakers. And a tiebreaker judge has to rank every one of the speakers in order. And so that person, whoever your tiebreaker is, you really have to pay attention and you really have to have a lot of pluses and minuses in order to break any ties and be able to rank each speaker in the order that they you think they place from the first speaker to the very last speaker. So uh, that's the main difference between the, the, the judge tiebreaker and everybody else. Uh, let's see, I've been able to, I've been pretty lucky over the last several years, I've been to several internationals and several division contests. And I'm usually able to pick the top three, but not necessarily in the order, but I can pick the top three. And I've also noticed that on the form, there, basically there's three parts. There's the top third, the middle third, and the bottom third. And for the most part, the bottom third of the form really doesn't make a whole lot of difference. In fact, most of mine have exactly the same yeah. numbers. The middle form has a little bit more difference, but the top part, the top third is pretty much where you, you get most of the point values and differences in the speakers. And I, I, I also though will put numbers so uh, as I go and I will add them up. So at the end of the five minutes at the end, uh, my ballot's ready to be turned in, but I've been doing this for a little while. I love that. I think there's definitely different ways. I shared my way and what's worked for me, what I've ironed out. And Dennis just shared what you work for you and what you've ironed out. Um, so there's definitely different ways and that's why you need to practice and, and hone it down. That was one of the big things about going to an international contest and everything is the in the division district. You get to see different speakers, and if you're not judging, like you said, I can narrow it down to the first, second, third. Uh, but as it got higher up in the levels, it was harder. I was like, wow, I'm not judging. I really need to be careful and have a form in front of me to judge, to see who really won first. Because they're all really good at that point. Yeah, most of the contests that I've been to, even though you're not judging, they give you a form to play with, and I usually use that anyway. Yeah. Just for practice. It is. It's good practice. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments? Real? Uh, I'm not sure. It, Caroline, do you have anything you'd like to say? Or let's see. I guess she's chatting. Okay. Caroline says no. Last chance, everybody. <laughs> okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Couple other things before we leave. If you're a president or VPE, remember in two weeks on the last Saturday of the month, if you're a president or VPE, please attend the district webinar for the district uh, meeting. I think it's from 10 till 12 in the morning. And then our next webinar will be the first Saturday, excuse me, the first Sunday in October. And it will be about the free toast host website that most of us use for our clubs and Adam Franks will be doing that. So please join us on the first Sunday in October for a webinar on free toast hosts. That's right. the six. Yes. Okay. Anything else? Last chance, everybody. Okay. Thanks, Sarah. And thank you everybody for attending. <laughs>